The Browning A5 is one of the most revolutionary and iconic shotguns in all of history. We all know this shotgun by its humpback design, but there's actually quite a few shotguns with this humpback design that are not A5s, such as the one you're looking at. Well, kind of. Let me explain. This shotgun is a Savage 745, and this is the first semi-auto shotgun ever produced in the United States. It looks like an A5, but it's actually a Remington Model 11. All of these guns appear to be identical, and that's for good reason. They pretty much are. The common strength between these shotguns and many others is one man, John Moses Browning. Among his 128 firearm patents, this humpback autoloading shotgun stands out as one of his greatest accomplishments. And this is the current production of the A5, or the new A5, and it may look just like that original humpback design, but it's actually quite different. The Auto 5, or A5, was designed to be the first mass-produced semi-auto shotgun in the world. Gun technology and manufacturing was much more primitive compared to the modern systems we have today, especially when it came to the challenges of creating an autoloading shotgun. So how did he do it? Now, one of the main differences between this current production A5 and the original, like this one here, manufactured in 1948 in Belgium, is the barrel. John Browning's genius and simple solution was to create an auto-loading shotgun that actually had the entire barrel move rearward to eject the first shell, loading the second as it came back forward. When a shot is fired, the inertia from the shot sends the bolt and barrel rearward in tandem. The bolt locks back momentarily as the barrel starts to return forward, allowing the shell to eject. As the barrel continues to move forward, it triggers the release of the bolt, sending the bolt and the next round forward into battery. In today's terms, this design is really quite simple. To be honest, if I was gonna take either one of these guns apart, this one's a lot easier to disassemble and clean. But anyways, for 1898, this advancement was industry defining. In fact, it was so good that when the patent for the A5 was brought to Winchester for production, they turned John Browning down. Yes, you heard that right. The story of how these A5s were able to make it into my hands 126 years later is crazy. Here's where it gets interesting. The year is 1899, and Winchester Repeating Arms is at the top of their game. Just a couple of years prior, they had broken sales record for their new firearms, such as the 1897 and the 1894 centerfire lever action. Meanwhile, John Browning had just finished his design for the auto-loading shotgun. His next step was to bring it to Winchester, as they had manufactured his guns before, like the Winchester model 1885, 86, 92, 94, Model 8, 95, and the 1897 pump action. Except this time, John had a different idea for how he wanted to sell his patent. Instead of selling the patent straight away like he had in the past, he knew what he had. He wanted to receive royalties for every A5 sold. In fact, Winchester had previously agreed to pay Browning royalties on another shotgun he had designed. Unfortunately, this shotgun never made it to production. And when it came to the A5, Winchester was simply not willing to pay royalties. Negotiations went on between the two parties for nearly two years. It frustrated John Browning had actually decided to take his patent to Remington in the meantime. As he was waiting to meet with the president of Remington, the guy literally had a heart attack and was never able to see the gun. So finally, John decided to take the patent overseas to FN in Belgium. FN had manufactured some of his handguns prior. And guess what? They were delighted to produce the A5 shotgun. Well, that's it. End of story. That's not where the story ends. It's just getting interesting. FN started production and stamped serial number one onto their first A5 in 1902. They kept cranking out A5s and the people kept buying them. However, the reach of the A5 went far beyond your average hunter. The A5 was used by many countries for many purposes in wartime. One of my favorite stories is how aerial combat gunmen would use the A5 shooting skeet to practice shooting at moving targets. The Auto 5 was also popular among British forces who stated it was good for close combat jungle warfare. During World War II, production of the A5 was brought back stateside to the United States. During this period, it was Remington that produced them. You see, after the deal with FN, Browning went back to Remington to sell them a license of the A5 patent. Thus, in 1905, the first American-made 
semi-auto shotgun is born, the Remington Model 11. So we have the Browning A5 being produced in Belgium by FN, and the Remington Model 11 being produced in the United States. But what about those other knockoffs, like the Franke 48 or the Savage 745? Well, I hate to ruin it for you, those aren't knockoffs at all. John Browning was a businessman, and a good one. Doing business well means selling your product. He also had a wife and 10 kids to feed. The A5 design patent was later licensed to Franke, who created the 48 AL, then to Savage, creating their 720 and 745 shotguns. The common denominator is the genius of John Browning. The original A5 was still being produced by FN this whole time, up until 1975, except for those six years from 1940 to 1946, you know, due to Belgium's occupation by the Nazis. These Browning A5s were made by Remington, who was already making the Model 11. These A5s, manufactured by Remington for Browning, can be identified by a serial number that has ABC in it. So what happened in 1975? Well, this is a pivotal point for Browning. The year is 1975. John had long passed away in 1926 and his son Val Browning was in charge. Like the businessman his father was, he was on search for a higher quality product and lower costing production. The A5 made one final production switch to a Japanese company known as Moroku Firearms. Finally, in 1998, manufacturing of the A5s ceased except for a few commemorative models created at FN in 1999. Today, Moroku is still manufacturing popular Browning shotguns like the Satori line. And here we are, 126 years after the original Auto 5 was manufactured in 1902. We have the current production that started by Browning in 2014. Now, whether you're a fan of the new A5 or you're a fan of the original A5, there's no denying John Browning's legacy rings out especially loud with the A5 shotgun. And that's a brief history on the Humpback Shotgun, the Browning Auto 5.